We need a resurrection experience. And such an experience of the resurrection happens when we share our faith. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, you all know the story. We need to overcome despair and darkness. We need to overcome our desire to run away from Jerusalem. We need to encounter Christ as they did on our road and to get beyond our inability to recognize Jesus. And we do that by exchanging on our life's experience when we talk together about our faith, our hopes, and our dreams. This is how the two disciples finally recognized the Lord and experienced the resurrection. Their shared faith caused their hearts to be set on fire again. The encounter and the exchange produced what? A 180 degree turnaround experience. Those two guys left the bar where they were hanging around eating and drinking and went back in the middle of the night. They went back to where it all began, back to Jerusalem. And they went to their friends and says, hey, you know what? <laughs> I just met the Lord. It's that new enthusiasm for the mission. And it's that purpose for proclaiming new life. For saying that Christ is real and that Christ is possible and that he exists. That's essentially the goal of the new evangelization. And this is what the new evangelization proposes as our needed experience and process. But it's a risk as well as a challenge. The risk involves exposing ourselves to ridicule. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people, if they could hear me say what I'm saying here today, I say, that guy's crazy. It means that when you go stand by the water cooler or you have your 14th cup of coffee in the office, wherever you happen to work, it means not being afraid of being called a Christian. I had someone come up for ashes uh, yesterday. No, Wednesday. Today's Friday. And the lady comes up to me and says, I work in an office where nobody believes in God or Jesus Christ. Put a big cross on my forehead. <laughs> I said, Amen. And I put it on. <laughs> and then I had Bishop Hayes come up to me, and of course she's bald, right? So, so I put, a, I put a big cross on his forehead, and when we were having lunch at the house, I said I was having a great time today putting ashes on people with bald heads. And he turned to me and he says, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a risk involved in speaking our faith. It involves our reluctance to speak. And it's risky to share with other people what's in your heart. But when it happens, something happens. The challenge in all of this is to reach out to another person and trust that what's in my heart will speak to the heart of the other. So who's going to take up this challenge? Is our church up to the task? Well, this remains to be seen. And I'm hoping that among us, there are enough interested persons that we can engage and embark upon this new chapter and phase of the journey of our faith. 
If we want to experience in our own time a new Pentecost, which is the resurrection experience and the transformative engaging power associated with it, then like what happened at the first Pentecost, the faith needs to be shared, it needs to be proposed, it needs to be heard, and it needs to be received. This means, in practice, sharing how, where, and when the resurrected Christ became more than a message, but a living person who can be encountered and known, who is experienced as a source of hope, who is welcomed as the liberator from all that would imprison and shut us down, who is seen as the provider of new and abundant life possibilities. And so communicating and sharing our faith is the new evangelization. And so at the core of this mission, there is the apostolic work, and I'm calling what this involves a sharing in the apostolic ministry. What I mean by that is that we can be disciples all our life and be followers of Jesus all our lives, but there's a point at which we got to move from being disciples to becoming apostles. That means stop sitting at the foot of the master and learning the message but accept to go out and proclaim the message on behalf of the Master. And so this new evangelization is an apostolic work which involves transmitting the faith. And this faith transmission happens when each of us is empowered and when each of us is willing to go across the boundaries that separate us to connect with another and to put out for whomever is willing to receive it the story of where, when, how, and why Christ became personally relevant, significant, and a decisive factor in our lives. And so the transmission of faith is not just about passing on concepts or ideas. It's not primarily about implementing the catechetical programs or even teaching moral standards. While all of these things are important, faith transmission is first and foremost about presenting and proposing Jesus Christ as Lord. The rest will follow. If we want Christ to be known, loved, and served, words that Gerald used in his prayer and familiar to us all of, who are of a certain age, and most of us here tonight are, it's the stuff of the penny catechism. If we want Christ to be known, loved, and served, then Christ must be presented as a person, and he must be encountered personally as the one who saves the one who makes a difference in the way life is lived and experienced, encountering Jesus Christ as a person and coming to know him as Lord and Savior, as Redeemer and Son of God, this is the central and most important and significant piece of the new evangelization. And so if we retain nothing else about the new evangelization tonight except this point, we will have made great strides in grasping the grace of this mission. The person of Jesus Christ and our experience of him as a living person, I think that's what has been either lost among the membership of our church, or it has never been there to begin with. And I gave this story uh, when I was uh, talking the other day at St. John the 23rd. I talked about the fact that I came from uh, Quebec. And I recall reading when I was there in the Quebec church of some years ago. I read that the church there 
have become a powerful institution in Quebec society, which controlled people's behaviors, but which, as we discovered in the 60s, I think it was on a Tuesday afternoon, it all shut down. That that church had never managed to capture people's hearts with the heart of Christ. That reminds me and tells me that cultural Catholicism has not stood the test and the passing of time, contrary to some popular beliefs. Of course, none of this applies to Nova Scotia. But my point illustrates that if faith is not a personal relationship, then it's only a concept, and we don't give our lives the concepts. And we don't have faith in an idea. We only have faith in a person, and we only give our hearts to persons. Well, We live in a totally secular world. And if the new evangelization is going to have an impact, this is the point which makes it new, is that we touch people's hearts for the first time. It's after that that follows the truth about who Christ is. It's after that that we, re we rediscover the reality of God. It's after we've encountered the Lord personally that the credibility of the church can be reestablished. And we can do this when we proclaim the gospel with some new ardor or when the gospel is heard again and received for the first time by many or as if for the first time for many others because we've discovered new methods that we put at the service of the gospel. And this gospel will be heard and received as grace and good news. And when it is, that's when it will overcome disgrace and bad news. And so this learning again happens after being touched and transformed by the power of the resurrected Christ. And as it did for St. Paul, it will bring its effects. And one of those effects is that we will have to let go of all that is not important, all that makes up our present day rubbish which all of you here know what the real translation is. And what it also means is that in the letting go, we must put aside assumptions and illusions. It means cutting our losses in some instances and redirecting our energies, talents, and resources to the primary mission, which is Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going on and on here, and I think I better quit. And Duncan is nodding his head, and he says he's had it. <laughs> but the point of all of this is, who can I count on? And the reason why you're here is because each of you, in some way or other, can build up and help us create an effective and efficient network of evangelizers. That's the invitation. Do we have the desire to do this? Will we take the time to see in each other the gift that each one of us brings to this mission? Can we be patient enough to determine what the best ways are to honor and respect each other's gifts? Are we open 
enough to let our presence, our talents, and whatever contribution we can make find its proper place in this ministry of ours? Well, I ask the questions. I don't know the answers. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. And so, with all, even with these unanswered questions in mind, I hope that we can initiate the shaping and the forming of this apostolic team by talking with each other and by allowing ourselves to be affected by the spark of the Holy Spirit, which is in each one of us. And so while you have expertise, none of you are here as experts. I'm not here as an expert. I'm here with you as a person of faith. And with my experience of faith and your experience of faith. And it is out of this, which is our only real qualification for being here, it's out of this shared faith that we will discern what the Spirit of God is telling the Church of Halifax Yarmouth what Christ is calling us to be and to become, and what concrete actions we can do. The new evangelization is a call to take seriously the Great Commission to go out into the whole world to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, to teach and to proclaim the gospel of Christ. If we respond and accept this commission, then the Spirit of Christ will once again build up his church in our time with a new generation of disciples and founded on the rock of faith which gathers us together. Can I count on you? Yes. Amen. Thank you.